Hello YouTube and welcome back into another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Kingdom Come Deliverance and we're doing another fan requested armor guide. This one is the 13th century knight's armor guide and this was requested by Joseph Spy. A very simple request, uh, no recommendations or nothing like that. Also very vague given that it's a 13th century knight, that's a hundred years. Uh, and that could be a great many things, but I figured uh, I'd interpret it to the best of my ability, you know, spirit of the law, not letter of the law, and go with uh, generic what you'll find if you look it up, like if you Google 13th century armor, 13th century knight, this is most commonly what you're going to find. And of course there's some caveats, because I'm working with just items in the game, I'm not using any mods, so I can't bring a Great Helm or a Templar or Waifenrock or something like that into the game, I can't do that, because, you know, I'm trying to use vanilla assets. So we're going to do it best we can with vanilla assets, and I think it turns out looking pretty good. So let's start off with weapons. So for weapons, we of course start off with a dagger because everyone needs a dagger. That rule's never going to change. Then we have the shield with crest, an interesting item that can be difficult to find. I think I personally found this one after building the guardhouse in the From the Ashes DLC, uh, you know, Privislavitz, and this was in there, so this is where I got that shield. Um, it's got a cross on it, it's got the right shape and approximate size for a 13th century shield. And now the important distinction here is shield sizes, now for the most part, because they, they shift around a bit, but in general shields got smaller as armor got better and better. So in the 13th century kite shields were still pretty pretty big. I don't know if you'd call this a kite shield or a heater shield. It kind of looks like a heater shield. But they still cover a decent portion of your body. If you look how big it is, that's basically your whole torso. So the reason for that being that you didn't generally see a lot of people running around with comprehensive plate armor, so the shield needed to play more of an active role. Uh, so it's still a larger shield. But like I said, I think that one is definitely the way to go. Then we have the Needle uh, Arming Sword. I chose this one A because it's got good stats and B because it's the typical cruciform uh, arming sword that you would see in the 13th century. I mean, it's hard to say if you'd see this one exactly. Steel might be a little different, but I can't tell that from the game. Nothing super fancy about it. 50 stab damage, 40 slash damage. It's a good sword. It's, it's a good middle-of-the-road arming sword, I should say. So that's the one we went with there. So that's weapons. Let's show you clothing. So for clothing, we started with... Uh, my mentality here was if this is someone in this year wearing armor from the 13th century, they're probably not very rich. So I'm thinking uh, lesser son of an impoverished noble house wearing their grandfather's armor from the Crusades. I have no idea. But that's kind of what I went with. So we have a simple neck chain, knight spurs because it's still a knight, and a copper ring. So nothing fancy. They probably won't even get mugged for it. And then for clothing, I went with tight black hose because I think they look really nice and they kind of fit the theme. Uh, a padded coif, just the plain one, not the hoodie boy, because the 13th century coifs, generally speaking, this is kind of what they look like. Uh, so it kind of fits perfect. And then the sturdy gambeson. Stylized it looks a lot like what you'll find if you look up historical tapestries and stuff like that. They're going to show you, you know, typical arming for knights and nobles in the 13th century. So that's what I went with there. So that's clothing. As you can see, not very shiny or fancy, but I think it looks accurate. So let's add some chainmail. So for the chainmail, I had to go best of the best because if you know much about historical armor and such, the 13th century was very heavy on chainmail. Like I said, because plate wouldn't be very prevalent at this point. I mean, it existed, and if you had very rich people or, or nobles or whatnot, you would see certain varieties of it, and you might see it even on lesser ones, and you'll see some on this suit that I'm able to incorporate using historical, you know, references for examples. Uh, the only thing is, generally speaking, the comprehensive mail in the 13th century would also usually be you'd have a male gauntlet too. Male ga gauntlets don't exist in this game, so I'm not able to do that, but we are able to do the long noble hauberk, male chosses, and the n noble's male coif. So, very, very good mail, best in the game, had to do it because 13th century armor is very reliant on mail. So that's our mail, let's add the top layer and see what that looks like. Okay, and so for the top layer, we started out with a dark plate armor jacket, so this is going to be a coat of plate, uh, which despite popular belief, because I see this a lot online, people arguing about this, Coat of plates would have been very prevalent in the 13th century. Obviously, only for people who had enough money for it, but this would have been something that you probably would have seen on wealthier landed knights through nobles uh, very commonly. It's just that most of them wore tabards or waifen rocks that kind of covered it, so most people, when they look historic, they think they're just wearing, wearing mail. But oftentimes, they'd be wearing some types of brigandine or a uh, plate jack or coat of plates like this would be more common. So that's what we started off with for the torso armor. 
Then we have the short Brigandine Chasses, and these aren't perfect because I wasn't able to find any historical references for a lot that covered from the thigh down, but I was able to find a lot where they had a lot of knee plate coverage. Basically, they kind of looked like uh, knee pads, but, you know, made out of steel that just covered the front and sometimes the outer sides of the knees. Those were very common, so, you know, I, I went with this because I felt it was necessary and, you know, you'll see, it gets covered up anyway, so it still holds true authenticity-wise. Then we have a skull cap. Now, this would be what would be called a half helm at this time. They, they would have called something that looks like this like a half helm. Half helm, And you could have a nasal half helm, so it could have a, something sticking out over the front. But this is what I went with. Because typically, at least based on the sources that I was using to make this guide, you'd see something like this, a real small half helm that covers it well, and then over top of that you'd be wearing a great helm. There aren't any great helms in the game, so I can't use one. There's a mod I saw for it, but like I said, I didn't want to use any mods. And I didn't want to use the Grand Bassinet because it's, period-wise, it's not even close. Sometimes I've I've done, like, role-playing where I, I did a Templar video and I use that one because it's the closest we have to a great helm in the game. But I didn't want to use it for this because it's just, period-wise, it's, it's totally wrong for a 13th century helmet. Whereas the skull cap is totally something that you would see in the 13th century. So like I said, you could use, there's a whole bunch of different helmets that would work for this. No bassinets, because bassinets weren't very popular at this time at least not eh, they might have been in certain regions but not not the ones that like i said that i was using for this video so this is the helmet i chose uh and then we have leather gloves because like i said there would have been male gauntlets but those don't exist in the game leather go uh, gloves certainly existed in this period so i figured period wise they'd be accurate then we've got some plate uh cooters cowders something like that these were very much used very frequently in this period, so it felt right. And so that's uh, that's all the armor we're able to put on them. Like I said, it it you shouldn't have been expecting a knight in shining armor because in this period, plate armor was limited. It just wasn't very common. So this is what we look like. Now, it may not look perfect, and that's because, like I said in this period, knights, especially crusaders, who is probably who most people think of when you think of the 13th century, would have been wearing tabards or a, a Waifenrock. And so we're going to pop a Waifenrock on top, and we're going to use the long, plain Waifenrock. So you can see, it's uh, definitely nothing fancy looking, no cool crests, nothing like that, not even a belt to uh, cinch it in the middle, which, you know, would have certainly been used because you'd have had your sword belt on the outside, not underneath. The sword just kind of looks like it's floating, it would be here. But this is the only one I could find with that nice long length, and also wasn't like uh, Rete Waifenrock or uh, a Sasau Waifenrock. I wanted just a plain one because I wanted this to be, you know, sort of a non-defined knight. So this is our 13th century knight. I think it turned out looking pretty good. You look up hist historical examples of armor from this period, and this is very similar to what you'd see. Like I said, there's small differences, but it's close. So that's uh, that's the suit in its entirety. As far as stats go, we've got a value of 5,900.6 uh, groschen, so very, very cheap, which is to be expected. You know, it, it looks cheap. These This would not be cutting edge for this period, so it's very cheap. Uh, then we have an AAR, or average armor rating, of 59.75. So this is not... It's better than wearing no armor, and it's better than so quite a few items you could use, primarily because we use the best male in the game, which gives you a nice stat boost all around. But this certainly isn't what I would classify as a tank, or anywhere near it. So a couple hits and you'll die in this armor. Arrows, everything, it, it'll take you out. And then we have a weight of 74.1 pounds. So even though it's not the best armor in the game, it weighs almost as much as the best armor in the game. Uh, and again, a lot of that comes from the fact that the chainmail is one of the heaviest components in any suit of armor, and you still have that. So very heavy, or pretty heavy, not great protection, but pretty cheap. But authenticity-wise, it looks great, so that's fun. So uh, we're going to test out this suit of armor because I know it's not going to perform all that well. And I want to show you that. So let's just go find someone to fight. All right, we picked someone that's probably going to be able to whoop us. There. But uh, we'll give her a try. Maybe if we... Oh, I don't Over think we're going to catch him by surprise. It's not letting me hit this guy. There we go. So we got one. This shield is huge. The answer is my press. Duh. Just when I wanted Break it up. Watch Duh. out. Come on, then. Come on, son. Okay. Two. Two. We might Get be able to take him out. Even with our outdated all oh, three. That's not hey, idea. All of you, gather <laughs> here. Oh, oh boy. We're cutting him down. If we can take one more out, our odds will be not too bad. Oh crap, there's two more there. Who's there? Hey, all of you, gather here. Crazy alarm. Oh boy. Alarm! 
I'm trying to do a lot of lunging if you haven't noticed because it, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm severely outmoded here and I don't want to leave a uh, risk <laughs> of uh, just getting whooped if I try slashing because they've got much better armor than I do. And I'm just using a short sword so I'm already at a disadvantage. Oh, and there are a lot of them. I definitely picked the wrong camp to test out this armor. Ooh, but we took one out. Okay, 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 one more down. Bring it all out! Okay, this guy's almost done. There we go. There we go. This guy, we've got this guy's health on pretty well. He doesn't have super great armor. It looks like he doesn't even have chest armor on, so it looks like he's kind of actually similar to us in the torso. There we go. All right. Let's cover our torso, use our shield. Enough. Look at that. Our 13th century knight just whooped this camp of 14th century knights. Mid, mid 14th century. Well, not knights, but you know. Close enough. Oh, wait. What's that? Well, uh, that was close. He almost got away. So let's take a look at our armor. We did pretty good there. Got a little dirty. Got some blood on our sword, but actually much better than I thought we did. I mean, obviously we were spamming. Doing a lot of thrusting in there. You call me Captain Stabbin, the 13th century knight. But uh, we got away with it. So that's this armor guide. Again, that request came from uh, Joseph Spy. Uh, looks like big smoke. Uh, so let's go ahead and leave any other recommendations or suggestions or requests you may have down in the comment section. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.